Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to 10 Rounds of Missing. This is the way of the world, but not the only way. Everyone, go! Hello, what up? I'm Daisy, and I'm playing Andy. Yeehaw. Hello, my name is Rose, and I'm playing Rin, Ness, uh, Rin Nissa of Timbers. What up? I'm Nessie, and I'm... Bless your heart. <laughs> The implausibility of our choices of character names have not been able to fade since even the months since our last <laughs> session. They're all perfect. Yeah. yeah. God damn. I'm secretly a child. You should know this, probably. Yeah. This is known. So. Oh, that's good. Who remembers what happened last session? We all took a level. We got our quest from Grim. And, uh, his we got told we got to avenge Snoop Dogg. Yep. <laughs> um, I don't remember where we were going, if I'm being honest, but I remember what we did. I have materials to make potions for my arm. I was given that. Do you remember that? Cool. Uh, we're going to assassinate some hoes. Mm -hmm. right, we went then, back to the tower. Yeah, you're I back think? at uh, you're back at the matriarch's tower, Toya de Matri. Yeah. All right, we're trying to ally all the islands and kill some clowns. Like, uh, is that not Borderlands? That's not the right name. <laughs> It's going to take me like 20 minutes to figure out what video game I'm thinking of. Shit. We'll come back to you. Go on without me. <laughs> I'll just slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at any rate. Uh, we were going to the... Uh, I, I made specific reference to uh, Dragon Age last session. Hell yeah. Uh, we're going to the, um, one, two, three, four, five, the five locations. Sorry, I have to look back at my own map and count it. We're going to the five, uh, significant plot locations where plot will happen. Hell uh, yeah. If you have the map up, go ahead and just open that, or you can just scroll up in the Discord chat, because I sent it there a couple of weeks ago. But the locations are the Deeps, the Wooden Galaxy, the Quartering Castle, uh, the Mako Barracks, and the Farmlands. DM, could you do us a favor and pin that whenever you get a chance? Uh, yes, actually, I can. Oh, God. Oh. I am scrolling up to open it in a new tab. So five plot locations. Um, so we should decide, you know, meta sense, I guess, where we want to go first. Is the matriarch? And, um, I guess I'll I'll put my character voice on. Uh, matriarch. Yes. Do you have any suggestions as to where we start? Well. I know that there's uh, currently like an investigation going on at Quartering Castle. Mako Barracks is about as money-oriented as they have been since uh, their founding. The Farmlands is... I don't know what the fuck their deal is, man. The Wooden Galaxy is chaotic, but if you can find help there, it's going to be a badass motherfucker. Or possibly, like, maybe even two. <laughs> and uh, the, Deeps is, uh, the Deeps is very dark, so... Have a dark vision or, like, a light... You know, flashlight, torch, if you're fantasy British. All right, then. Um, I mean, I remember uh, uh, Andy got a good vibe from, or a very, a very, a very powerful vibe from the Wooden Galaxy. So I think that's one that I would like to go to um, first. And where did you say the investigation was? The Quartering Castle. Oh, I love to bring up a good investigation. So 
So I think those are on opposite sides of the map, but those are the two that I'm most interested in starting at. Mm. It might be fun to wander over to the wooden one. I like the idea of finding some one or maybe two badasses. I think we should avoid the barracks. We ought to avoid them until we have some form of backup because I do count them as my friends, but they will also sell a motherfucker to the devil for six silver and a tobacco. <laughs> yeah, I would I would wait until you can like outbid whoever has paid them to kill you. Because then it's free game. Yeah. All right. In uh, Wooden Galaxy we go. Cool. You guys uh, take the horse over there. I'd like to apologize to Archie for leaving him behind. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm a social pariah everywhere I go. <laughs> You are va very valuable to our mission here, and we care for you dearly. Certainly. We'll give you, we'll give you a heads up next time, maybe. Ah, uh, no worries. I'm certainly mm -hmm. not just using you all as a tool to eat more angel hearts. Of course not, Archie. You'd never do that. Never, like ever. you've already done once. <laughs> this is the best character. Art's gonna leave. Lean down to Ren's. Is he naive? Is he playing him, or is he legitimately just not like understanding what's happening here? I don't think he's all quite with it with us, my dear. Well, shit. <laughs> so, also as a reminder, uh... also out of character. I remember the game. It's Far Cry. I've seen Far. Our cry. <laughs> nice. All right. So you guys head over to the Wooden Galaxy. Yeah. Sorry, my brain just stopped wor uh, working there for a second. Eventually, Alfred stopped thinking. No, so. As you head on over there, it happens. Your peaceful, uh, mostly like regular morning, I guess, is uh, interrupted by uh, a gunshot, and then a few moments later, a uh, about the a size of a coin, uh, a hole uh, blows itself in the side of your chariot. Oh, for fuck's sake! Shit. Is that in character, or are you just disgusted? It's both. <laughs> <laughs> in the distance, you um, can see we, the glint we, of a, uh, a man with a gun and a, uh, a large bandolier and one of them, like, bandanas around his face. And, like, it's a 10-gallon hat, but it's fucking huge. It's like a 25-gallon hat. Does he look like the guy from SpongeBob who comes after them? I wouldn't know. I never watched one. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Is this a guy that I know? No, he's is from the movie. Would... First movie. No, is this a guy, like, in universe, is this dude an, a dude I know? Yeah, you're pretty sure. I know I don't know shit about Spongebob, okay? <laughs> make, a wisdom, make a history check for me. Oh, fuck. I don't even have my time. <laughs> One well, second. Uh, well, well, a what check? Uh, a history check, which is a wisdom. Okay. History. He's also All riding right. atop a uh, large horse hell. with fire instead of a mane, a tail, and hooves. The horse is winged as All right, well. I got a 12. All right. I forgot I was dumb. You definitely have seen this scary fucking horse before. You have oh, no idea uh, who uh, who rides problem. it, but you can tell that he uses guns based on the gunshots and the bullet holes. 
Oh no. More accurately, you can see a, uh, a big handsome rifle, which is probably what he blew the hole in the side of your chariot with. And uh, at his belt, there is what looks like a handgun of some variety. All right. Well, he's, unless he's hiding more, he's got about the same amount of firepower as I do, at least. Yeah. Plus, like, a bitch and horse. Plus a bitch and horse, which I, well, I mean, we do have a horse, but I don't know if this horse would be described as bitchin. <laughs> would our horse be described as bitchin, DM? <laughs> <laughs> That's a question you have to ask the horse yourself. I would love to see that conversation at the patent office. Uh, uh, patent office. <laughs> I would like to register this as bitchin. <laughs> and can I trademark that? Thank you all. Get it to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should not find that as funny as I do. Uh, no one should find anything I say as funny as they do. Oh, that's you good, buddy? No, I'm just I'm just full of lame jokes. I mean mood, but like the daddest oof. of jokes falls around my sword. Dadliest catch. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this guy shooting at us? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try and steer the carriage in a way that's harder to shoot us, I guess. Cool. Make an animal, hand animal handling. Okay. I think I'm doing this right. Oh, it's my plus. Oh, God. Ha! I'm good at that. Nice. You handle that animals. <laughs> His next few shots go absolutely wide, uh, of which you notice there are four, and then there's a uh, significant noticeable break in firing to imply to you that he probably is reloading right now. Okay, sweet. Then I'm going to freaking uh, <laughs> take an action, I guess. Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. I am going to throw a vial of alchemic acid at the horse specifically at its face his horse not ours obviously <laughs> just throw it at our horse all right <laughs> it's wild horse in particular Gamer. wild horse wild, wild horse wild nope it doesn't matter i can't speak um could be like that i would do it's a it's a 14 to hit Cool. Uh, you you huck this thing like a uh, like like a softball, and it goes uh, directly into the horse's eyeballs. Perfect. Uh, it immediately begins to like bubble and smoke as soon as the glass shatters. Also, uh, no one ever talks about this when you're talking about throwing potions, but a whole bunch of broken glass gets embedded in this horse's like chest. Yeah. <laughs> no one ever brings that up, but like, Jesus. yeah, it's totally safe to throw potions. There's no glass, like, hazard or anything. Oh, it's safety glass. It can't hurt you as much as you think. It can only hurt you in your mind. <laughs> yeah. It I've always thought that... shatters in cubes rather than shards. <laughs> dealing with glass is a lot like dealing with wild animals. Glass is a lot more afraid of you than you are of it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm terrified. <laughs> this reminds me, um, when we were playing uh, Curse of Strahd, at one point I was riding on the back of our druid because I was playing a three-foot character, and I had garlic, so I decided to chuck garlic at Strahd, and I get a natural 20, so I nail him in the eye with it. <laughs> and I've never been more proud of a moment in D&D than that one right there. Oh, That's my allergies. Garlic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Anyway, um, the acid very quickly burns away the, uh, oh, nice, lovely. Um, the acid very quickly burns away all the, like, face flesh, and you're left with, uh, like a screaming, burning horse skull, because it turns out that the fire is, like, within him. 
Mm. And uh, the horse is definitely still alive, which, you know, from your animal handling proficiency, uh, Andy, you can tell is pretty weird. Most horses, most anything really can't live without a face, especially one that's been like stripped to the bone. Uh, and also, being on fire is typically not great. Just going to come out and say this, you know? Avoid being on fire. That's a hot take, but I'll consider it. You'd think- it's a literal hot take. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All of us were racing for the same dumb joke. <laughs> anyway, the horse begins to, like... Uh, I guess gallop erratically. Um, not a whole lot of galloping when you're like a horse with hooves and mane and tail made of fire. And also now face of fire. Uh, and like, it looks like that fuck, it looks like uh, those really sc- uh, scary drawings of a Kelpie, but like fire elemental instead of water elemental. It's just a fucking scary horse skull. It would be a dope metal cover. Oh yeah, absolutely. It. Uh, the guy on the back of the horse has stowed the rifle into his back, uh, and has grabbed the reins with both hands. Uh, the reins, as you can see, appear to be, uh, just, like, black chains. Uh, and he's struggling to keep the horse on target, namely you guys. Someone else want to step up here? I'm trying to parse it out. So it's the, the horse is still alive. Uh, the assailant adjusted, and we just got to roll with it. Yeah, he's not attacking you I right can now, shoot at least. It. You could. I can shoot his horse. <laughs> That's your solution to everything. It is my solution to everything. It's almost like guns have worked so far for me. <laughs> Not to be a smart ass or anything. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna shoot it with a rifle, I guess. Cool. Or wait, should we start like yelling to figure out what the fuck this guy's up to, or are we just retaliating? Up to you uh, guys. I'm definitely inqu- uh, I'm definitely curious as to why this person is attacking us, because we're not quite visible, so definitely give them a shout. Figure out uh, what they're about. Hart's gonna like go for the gun and then just leave it for a second. Cup her hands around the match and say, "Hey, <laughs> what the fuck?" Uh, the horse hears you guys and uh, straightens its path towards you. Shit. Uh, and with the horse now back on track, uh, the man takes out the uh, pistol from his belt, which you can see is a large, handsome revolver that has been severely damaged and beaten and scratched and rusted, but has been uh, meticulously upkept uh, to keep a gun that is probably older than God in commission still. All right, fuck it. We just need to shoot this guy. This thing belongs to the museum. Is he within 60 feet of us? What was that, Daisy? Uh, Is he within 60 feet of where Andy is? Not quite yet. But he's gaining okay. on you guys on account of only mm-hmm. having one guy. Yeah. I'm going to do my best to steer us without hitting anything, but let me know if he gets within 60 feet. Cool. What are you thinking, Andy? Well, he's holding on to something that there looks pretty metal. And I can, I can do a fancy thing to metals. Oh, well then, good news, good news. I like your thinking. I, I quite enjoy not getting shot. It's been one of my favorite pastimes and <laughs> really encroaching on that right now. <laughs> uh, as you guys are watching him, he stops for a moment uh, in his path of aiming. Aiming the revolver is a lot harder than the shotgun, but he pops this uh, the chamber open for a little bit takes out a, uh, a large feather quill, which seems a little out of character for him, considering his whole, like, bounty hunter cowboy aesthetic. And uh, with a uh, with a pen, uh, like, with this large feather pen, scribble something on the side of one of his bullets. And, uh... Oh. Shoots 
Archie in the chest with it. Oh, shit. Don't worry. It got one of my auxiliary hearts. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm glad you have those, Archie. Yep. Knew they'd come in handy someday. How many, how, many, how many auxiliary hearts do you have? Enough as I need. He takes a small magnet out of his pocket because being an artificer, of course, he has a bunch of random shit in his pockets. And using the magnet, uh, much like for President James Garfield, draws the bullet out of his chest wound. Uh, and written on the side in ink is uh, the price on your heads as placed by the angels. Was it written in pretty cursive? Yeah, actually it was. I'm going to yell back. You have excellent penmanship. Please stop shooting us. <laughs> he tips his hat at you slightly and then uh, with one of those like cool spinning revolver moves holsters the gun and uh, begins to drive the horse quicker. Why? I didn't, I didn't think that would work. From his belt, he draws a lasso. How do we oh, already God. have the bounty on our heads? How do the angels... Well, we did kill people. Never mind. We did kill people. <laughs> they like to work fast. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. I'm not used to that. You're not used to an expedient government? <laughs> I'm not used to uh, getting caught by an expedient government, dear. Uh, yeah, she lives yeah, in a cyberpunk fair. dystopia shit future. And also her character... <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It took longer to register than it really should have. <laughs> oh, slow so, the punch today. I think that we should. Uh, uh, ev I think we should evade, but not speed up anymore, Andy. I think we should let him get within range and try and shock the sh shock the shell out of him. I, I would like to not die today in this carriage, so whatever you find dangerous ladies say is what's what's gonna happen. I'm just your humble driver right now. Well, you need to be <laughs> readying up, because uh, this guy's gotta go. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, he draws nearer and nearer and nearer still, and eventually is able to throw the lasso around one of your uh, wheels on this here chariot here. How far is he from us? He's probably within like a 45 feet, maybe 40. Okay. Well, Andy's, Andy asked to be told when he was within 60 feet. He, he got up there pretty quickly. Uh, all right. F following the theme of his horse, bitchin', I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I would like to cast heat metal on his gun. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, do you have a preference on which gun? Um, th he has a shotgun and a revolver. He's got a rifle and a revolver. Um, I'm gonna do the uh, rifle because it's bigger. Okay. Um, at first he's like he just doesn't notice that uh he's literally on fire, <laughs> but uh he 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 hears the sound of searing flesh and it's on his leather coat naturally. Oh, rip. Um, and when he notices that the uh, the smoke is coming from his ass and not just the uh, the thing, he yanks the revolver off of his back and uh, holding it by the wooden part of the handle just kind of glances around at where he could even put it. And uh, out of options, uh, throws it at you guys. Let me get a roll over here. No. Well, that works. Uh, it lands in the chariot uh, unharmed uh, besides its slight meltage. He also removes his leather jacket for a moment um, and begins to, like, whip it in the air. Uh, it appears that he sewed, like, a metal plate in there, a magnetic plate, into his coat so he could just literally Ooh. stick things to his back like an RPG character. That's so cool. It's kind of a vibe, though. Yeah, right? Good for him. Too bad he has to die, but good for him. There's a big sear mark yeah. on the jacket where uh, the barrel of the rifle lay, and uh, you can kind of see the imprint of the trigger guard and trigger on there as well. 
And on the rifle itself, uh, the handsome wooden handle now has this, like, smoke burn into it. So half of it is, like, still the handsome brown, and the other half is this uh, burnt black, like, almost volcanic-looking ashy wood thing. This is Dungeon Mastering, everyone. You start off great, and then it all just starts to fart. <laughs> Can't confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just Looks shoot like we got ourselves a souvenir. Uh, yes. I was hoping for a snow globe, but go ahead and uh, uh, shoot him. Shoot him with my my rifle, cause I like my big old rifle. <laughs> Kick. Um, that's a seventeen to hit. Oh, all right. Well, that'll do it. Yay. Uh, fuck, sorry, I'm, my brain is dumb as shit today. Don't worry. We're all get, uh, for, for those watching, uh, I know that these come out a week apart for everyone, but, uh, we've been at, we've been out of it for like a month. We had a, we had a little Thanksgiving vacay. We had a couple of bad brain days. We had, ooh, we had, ooh, a lot of ooh. That uh 12 damage nice i'm aiming for his face not the horse just him uh okay well the 17 let's say this uh you hit him a square in the chest uh and you hear the faintest of like ting noises as uh the bullet mm -hmm. connects soundly with a large handsome brass badge on his chest Mm. <laughs> uh, however, since he's holding uh, a lasso in one hand and a uh, large wind catching coat in the other, uh, the knocking off of balance uh, uh, occurs as it would. And he's knocked off balance and thrown out of the saddle with one foot still <laughs> in the stirrup and plummets over the side of his horse. He yanks his horse upside down, and his horse is now running upside down, which makes it go down, I guess. What the fuck? In this weird fantasy horse physics world I've had to create. <laughs> we drove you to fantasy horse physics. <laughs> uh, kids, don't let friends do fantasy horse physics. It combined my two least favorite things, physics and horses. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And he begins to, uh, and he begins to start screaming. Uh, he drops the lasso, which is still tied to his belt, so it doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, but it makes him look mighty silly, as he's a man dangling from an upside-down flame skeleton horse, holding a coat in one hand, with a big length of rope on the other. Uh, and from the other side of his belt, he draws the revolver and attempts to just start shooting at you. But you can notice something real weird about his revolver. Um, everyone make a wisdom check to see if you can tell exactly what the fuck the deal is with his weird gun. Fuck. Throw them bones. Just straight wisdom or a wisdom throw? Uh, insight. Okay. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Off to a good oh. start. God, I only got a seven. We oh did worse. God. And that's with a plus four, you guys. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Oof. I'll go ahead and add all those together and throw you guys a bone here. <laughs> uh, you can see that every time he pulls the trigger of that revolver, Instead of going to the next chambered shot like you would with a normal revolver or nerf gun, if that's more your speed, uh, it instead spins wildly and lands on a random chamber. And may or and said chamber may or may not have a bullet. It's a fucking Russian roulette gun. It's a Russian roulette gun. And oh, I'm not, so does he start to load it himself? I'm not quite understanding. Basically, uh, Anytime you shoot, anytime he shoots, or anyone that may get this gun, assuming you defeat this boss, like cool style, um, 
anyone anyone who shoots this gun will pull the trigger and then roll a d6. If the roll's too low, you land it on an empty chamber. Or you could spend the turn reloading it and guarantee you'll get a full chamber. Wow. But yeah, that's uh, that's that gun. And you can see these wildly, wildly firing. But he's getting very unlucky. He pulled the trigger like 12 times and he got like two shots, which is pretty unlikely. He still even got three shots left in the damn thing. But that's the last you see of him as he and his large horse fall through a cloud, leaving a large man and horse shaped hole in the cloud, almost wily e. coyote style. <laughs> I like that. And with that, uh, you're out of you're out of sight of the man on the horse. I don't know if I feel much safer not seeing him. Well, I mean, he's out of range. He's away. We're both out of each other's range, and he went through the cloud cover. He's definitely lacking, and we will still have the advantage being on the high ground. Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, see, that's my goal is I make as many dumb references as I can to see who catches it and groans or catches it and goes, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and steer us towards like the busier areas in the hope that it'll deter people from shooting at us if there's more innocence around. It won't, but that's a cute thought. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up his big old uh, fancy boy gun that's currently still sitting in the bottom of our chariot, if I recall correctly, and I'm gonna see what I can figure out about it. Because I'm sort of knowledgeable about guns. It is nearly identical to yours, but it's been modified in almost every way. It holds one more bullet, and <laughs> it is a plus one. So plus one to aiming and plus one to damage. It makes the bullets do harder. They do more. They better bullet. Gonna just kind of hold it out to them to like, y'all to use guns? Uh, on occasion. I'm not sure oh, if I want that one, though. I want the other one that he had. My pa had one on the farm, but it was mostly for fighting the monster ants that came around. Which World War was that? Oh, uh, that was the first one. Don't you remember? The ants versus Germany? <laughs> so... They were mailed. The ants did. It was... <laughs> Do you want this gun or not? I'll take it. <laughs> sure, I'll give Andy the, the plus, plus punchy gun. Alright. I feel just like my pappy. Go ahead and add uh, a plus one rifle to your inventory. You you do know how this how it works, right? I don't need to give you like a crash course on gun safety. If you could tell me the stats for it, I would appreciate that. Consider that the gun safety. <laughs> uh, I think it's one d ten plus your dex mod, and then you have an extra. Point in your to hit, and you're an extra point in your damage. Yeah, and an extra bullet. So you have six bullets. I've only got five. Man, you're mighty good at teaching. Make it seem real easy. <laughs> I like this. I'm All also right, gonna, I'm gonna... Re reload my rifle just for my own mental. Health. Prudent. I'm gonna prop it up in the corner of the carriage and because I need both hands to steer in theory. Still trying to figure out how this horse works. <laughs> There's no autopilot on this horse. I'm trying to figure out if it's out to get us or not. <laughs> you never know aren't, with horses. Aren't all horses out to get you just a little? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 all right so after about an hour feel free to take a short rest if you want we didn't do much but go ahead and take one if you feel uh you come to a large uh gnarled 
piece of wood. It looks like a, it looks like giant space driftwood, only it's about the size of like a, a parking garage. All right. Not to put too fine a point on it, but it also would do fine for parking if that was what you're aiming for. I'm gonna take the hint and pull us in there. Set us down. Kind of fort on it. Is that a wood joke? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, from your position on the uh, on this large wood, you can see uh, far into the distance. There's almost like a uh, like a rotunda almost. Um, it's a large, uh, roundy thing. What are the circle? It's a large circle of wood. Incredible. Um, almost like a big vortex or like a whirlpool. At the center of it is a small, like ball of light, and surrounding it are the largest pieces of wood in the wooden galaxy, of which you are now on one of. Uh, on other ones, you can see things like small ecosystems of animals. You can see villages, mostly uh, mostly peopled by what it appears to be orcs, half-orcs, and humans. Um, there's the occasional elf or dwarf, but most of the inhabitants here are gray to green. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a bunch of things that are empty, and in between everything there's splinters. Between the more civilized parts that contain peoples... Uh, There are small bridges made of uh, wood and leather that connect them, and there are a few disparate bridges that connect them to the areas with beasts. Um, Facing the uh, center, facing the small glow of light, on every village there's at least one telescope. Uh, Sturdy, made of brass, very handsome, little old, little burnished, uh, but they're all pointed at the ball of light in the very middle, as though you know people know that at some point they will have to watch it, but they don't know much beyond that. Uh, you can see um, people far in the distance going about their day to day lives. Uh, there's people getting water out of um, a pond, you guess? Like maybe it's sap or something. You're not exactly sure where the water comes from. Maybe it's like collects after rain i don't know i should know i built this damn thing um looking at the light in the center can we tell what it is uh yes it's a gravitational anomaly composed of pure gravitons Ooh, that sounds bad oh that there's the whole fact of life around these parts Oh, core blimey, my accent just keeps getting worse by the episode. <laughs> Probably because you got shot in your auxiliary heart. Should, should we take you somewhere for that? No, that's fine. It was just the language heart. <laughs> oh, 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 goodness. The okay. core of the wooden galaxy, not to be confused with the large area on the map called core is a gravitational anomaly. It's basically like a small black hole, except it doesn't suck. I mean, a little bit. It draws things into it, but it doesn't crush them into a point of infinite density and mass. Uh, It's what keeps everything revolving around here. All right, so we see, like, villages and stuff? Yeah, mostly made of wood because of, you know, the wood. Yeah. Um, the, didn't the matriarch mention or someone else we ran into that we could probably find small jobs around here? Uh, yes. Then we might try and start where the people are and hope they don't start shooting us. Oh, they don't have guns. Then hope they don't start lassoing us or brick throwing there, there are a lot of weapons. I'm still learning. I'll be honest. I'll give you a heads up here. It's mostly wood oriented. That's Hello? fair. I don't want no splinters, though. Yeah. So Bows, we'd have spears. to be a bit more worried about clubs. Yeah, clubs. And such. Are, clubs are big well, in got, these parts. Well, I've got clubs. I can go toe to toe with them. 
I like your attitude, dangerous. You lady. have clubs? <laughs> yeah, that's my weapon. Oh shit. I don't I know how I missed that. Wait, uh, you have I mean, a club? I, I mostly lean on my uh, potions and eventually my spells. But I have I, no I, brain. It's all right, friend. I missed that. I'm the DM. Why do you, of all people, have a club? You're from the space future. Because <laughs> so I hated the weapons. I might get a gun later, but I hated every other weapon when I had a pick, and I was under I was under a time crunch. <laughs> Just imagine, like Ghost Runner or Cyberpunk 2077. We we pan over all the main so characters and you got like tech sick. pistols and like lightsabers and energy katanas and beam katanas and sabers and fucking laser guns and shit. And then there's just one gnome with a wood stick. Ooh. <laughs> I would be so <laughs> we'll want for it. it doesn't have to be a wood stick. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's like probably carbon fiber or something. <laughs> You know, somebody who brings a stick to a gunfight is somebody who knows what the fuck they're about, and I would respect that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're like, all right, this is a person not to fuck with. They're clearly not all with it. It's like the Dark Souls rule. Like, more armor is a problem until you see someone naked. That's the most problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah? Like, a naked dude in Dark Souls... That's no bueno, man. That means that he knows what he's doing. He's made himself the fastest he could possibly be. A naked dude in anywhere is no bueno. You know, I don't want this. <laughs> well, like imagine, <laughs> imagine you see a naked guy, but then he's also got like this big technological gauntlet on, so you know that he's tactically naked. Oh, that makes it worse. <laughs> I'm leaving him. <laughs> I see yeah, that on out. Messy, then he wins. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think I'm the winner by not having to continue to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's everyone's plan? Uh, I vote we head for the biggest area of people and poke around, know the land. All right. I'm see if they got a town hall or a place of a uh, conducted business and try to talk to whoever's in charge. Cool. I'm gonna take the keys. Um, Archie, do you want to head with us or do you want to stay back here with the horse? I'm going to find a deep hole to tunnel myself into so I can hibernate and grow back my heart. Is this is this is that how you work or are you are you kidding? Just like with my accent, my biological and genetic makeup get more and more obfuscated with every session. Right. Try and burrow nearby so we can find you when it's time to go. Okay. Soon I'll, I'll surpass God. He uh, bends over and starts uh, biting at the wood like a termite would. All right, it's time to leave. He'll be here for a while. <laughs> All right, where's everyone heading? I'm trying to process that, that and make sure my computer doesn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I guess I'll try. Uh, that's not my accent. Oh, I guess we should uh head towards the. I mean, I'm curious about the glowing ball of energy. I want to make sure it's properly guarded. If that's what what fuels this whole place, you know. I'm not trying to. <laughs> Tell them how to do their jobs, but get people after us, you know? Don't want to cause much trouble. This is the sort of thing where, like, if it could have been fucked with, it would have been a billion times by now. Gravitons are no big, like, no no pushover. All right, so then let's, uh, to the biggest grouping of people. Cool. Uh, going on foot? I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you guys step step over the little wooden bridges. Uh, they creak, but they don't give way. They're sturdier than they look. They just make a lot of noise because the leather's old and the rope is old and the wood is old and this shit's all been here for a while. As you step step along, uh, 
the sun kind of begins to go down and then changes its mind about it and curves back around in a weird path through the sky. And yeah, it looks like it just does that here. The night and day is already pretty weird because there isn't like a planet for the sun to hide behind the coward that it is. Uh, but here, even more so, there's not even like there, there's no semblance of any cover from it at all. There is never a night here. Uh, which is good for plants. They eat that shit up. The people kind of suffer a little bit, but that's that's, you know, they uh, they they have their thing and they they work it. Uh, after a few minutes of getting on over here, you eventually come to uh, a village. Um, kind of built. It's kind of built into a. Uh, what else? A large fucking piece of wood. Uh, about the size of like a football stadium. Um, it's been filled with dirt drawn from somewhere else, presumably either the core or the farmlands, because there's not many other places to get just raw dirt. They filled it with dirt, and there is a small pond that is presumably fed by an aquifer and is refilled by rainwater. Um, they've even got a, a little farm up. They're growing uh, potatoes, leeks, and wheat. And built on it is about 14 little houses uh, and then one larger house at the head of it all. Small orc and half-orc children play in the streets. Um, there's a human man and an orc woman arguing while looking at what appear to be like blueprints written on paper in the foundations of a 16th house. There's a <coughs> small person like singing. You assume that they're like a halfling or something, but they're just like saying a little song on one street corner. Life, uh, life's pretty peaceful here. It's pretty weird. It's it's lovely, odd, but quite lovely. All right. Uh, Where's everyone going? Yeah. What's everyone doing? I'm sorry. I I need visuals because my head's like not like my head's so foggy. Um. There's a big house. There's two people that are arguing over the building of the 16th house. There's children running and playing. Did you mention any other buildings, DM? Um, just 15 like, notable, miscellaneous not houses. houses. Not the suburbs. Not at the same time. I'm sorry. I said notable, not just houses, is what I uh, said at the same time. No. Okay. Um, well, I might not be the best at solving uh, arguments, but I'm very curious as to what these two are yelling about, so I'll go to the people with the blueprints. Okay. Uh, as you get over there, you hear people uh, yelling in either English accented orcish or orcish accented English. Boy. Uh, yes, by the way, people speak English in this fantasy world. Shut up, it's a fantasy. Uh, they're arguing about the uh, right way to uh, lay a basement. I don't know nothing about that, but I certainly find it interesting. Some think that you want to put the stairs in with rocks. Others think that it's just fine to put it in with dirt. Some want to put it in with like a like a clay base first. Others just want to go right in with concrete. They're uh they're 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 setting to work about it. Um, no one else is giving them any mind. This is probably pretty standard for them. Well, I'm gonna chuckle and be on my way. All right. So that was very, I was super curious. <laughs> That's one of the things though, right? If you hear someone like something loud at a restaurant, you're like, what are they talking about? I have to know. And why are they talking about it here? Yeah. Towards the big house then. All right. My cat just got stuck on the couch. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh no, <laughs> she's baby. Did you miss anything? She, she had she had her claws in the back and she couldn't get them out. So I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> we can catch you up if you There's need. There's a you couple miss bitching about how to put in a basement. Uh, I I heard uh, Rose do something with people. <laughs> or arguing about the best way to lay a basement, and I found it fascinating, but it didn't have much uh, use to me. So I moseyed on and let them continue about the discussion. That we're headed to the big house. Headed to the big house. Love that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm following. So, there's a large, handsome set of doors. 
like the doors are very well made. They don't have like a big like they don't have like my face on them. Amazing. Um, it's pretty shocking that they managed to find such well made pieces of wood. But like, I guess there would probably be every single variety of wood here, no matter what, on account of this once uh, upon a time being the biggest goddamned tree ever. And also, they uh, managed to find varnish and make it make them up all pretty like. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm gonna admire the carpentry. Ask uh, Andy, have you ever seen something like this uh, about where are you from? You know, did did anyone you know work with both wood? Uh, I think I had a cousin. Uh, his name was uh, what was it now? Jesus, maybe I don't know. We weren't close. He was a real good carpenter. <laughs> Someone write that down. Oh, It'll probably harsh. come up in the yeah, finale. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I can't play with meme lords. Nothing will get done. Only memes. Shh. No <laughs> dreams now. Only memes. <laughs> Your cousin sounds certainly interesting. I, uh, I mean, he's a raging alcoholic too. I don't know. That's why we didn't talk much. Andy, could you could you knock on that door for me, please? I'm begging you. <laughs> I'm going to go over and do a nice old country boy knock on that door. Thank you. All right. Um, someone who appears to be like a man, but like very large and gray. Like he's definitely humanoid in shape. He doesn't have like the large orca shoulders or head, but uh, just a fucking huge guy. Probably about like nine feet tall. Uh, gray wearing a... Sure. Uh, like a leather skirt and a little strap around his chest to hold uh, some spears. And that's, that's kind of it. Uh, opens the door. And he says, Oh, hello. Oh, well, howdy. Uh, my companions and I were uh, sort of looking for work. Um, could you happen to point us in a direction of some sort? Oh, right inside. Oh, thank you. I'm going to, gesture for the ladies to head in first. <laughs> now pleasant of you. Uh, friend's gonna, you know, like, do the whole, like, I just, she's gonna strut forward. It's like, alright, here we are. No threats here. <laughs> nice. Um, you guys tap into this uh, large house it's uh, essentially like a giant one bedroom. Well, that's really it. Uh, lining the walls are a bunch of windows that keep it very well lit with all the natural light, and uh, a bunch of the heads of various animals. Cool. Um, Don't know how I feel about that. There's a desk that is uh, covered in small scratchings. Uh, the scratchings are on paper. He's not a maniac. <laughs> um but the orc uh the large half orc man goes into one of the corners and pulls out a few chairs and uh, a table that has been uh mellifluously carved from wood uh and then kind of offers you all to sit I'll take a seat yeah He uh, uh, he holds up one finger as if to say, hey, wait a second. And then he says, hey, wait a second. And then um, Amazing. he heads out his back door and gets a uh, massive chair that is probably about like 400 pounds of just fucking wood. And just kind of thuds it down to the foot of the table. And then he puts his big butt in the chair and uh, kind of leans onto the table. And he says, as prophesized. You three are here. Uh, prophesize, you say? Yeah. Orcs have a way with the, you know, the gift of prophecy. I did not know. Do you have an oracle of sorts? Or do you guys, I haven't heard well, such a thing. Oracle. God. <laughs> <laughs> no. You see, it's a, it's a. I'm tired. I so much. <laughs> well, I regret asking 
asked me all my questions today in this campaign. I regretted every single question I've asked someone. <laughs> ah, the whole campaign was just for that. We can all go home now. We're at home. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I don't, remember what I, was gonna say. I don't remember what I was going to say besides that. I'm so annoyed. It was something in character about <laughs> the and not know or works because, you know, she's so far in the future that she wouldn't know about like, be a, it'd just be a legend to her when you like the Oracle of Delphi and all that in Greece would be like, she's like, oh, those are funny little stories that never happened. Yeah. Greece, Greece, what a funny made up country. Yeah. Greece and its sister country, Drippings, and its other sister country, Fat. Oh. Jesus. Boil country for what kind of high. Yeah, but anyway, what back to back to character discussions. So what did what did your uh uh, uh prophecy teller decide, decide to tell so what what happened? How did the prophecy come to be? Well, I was getting my daily prophecy read, and I said, I've got a problem right now with some termites. Do you know of anyone who can help me with termites? And uh, All right. my prophecy speaker um, gave me a prophecy. Uh, her eyes rolled back into her head. And, uh, she sipped this uh, miscellaneous gunge of some variety. And uh, she said, oh, gunge? yes. Yeah, it's uh, one of the, it's, uh, it's probably herbal tea, to be perfectly frank with you, but I don't touch the stuff. Very thick right. and syrupy, though. Uh, we make it with a lot of honey. In fact, it's mostly honey. We farm termites, you see. I, I did not. I, I see now. That's fascinating. At any rate, we, uh, we, uh, I got this prophecy, basically. It said, hey, someone's going to come from the north, help you out, yada, yada, all that jazz. And, uh, well, here you are. You're here to help? Question yeah. mark. I knew you would be. With your termites? Yeah, I've got a little termite problem. I see. So, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, well, we can help with your termites. Can you help us with uh saving the world? Uh oh, yeah, that was prophesized too. It's how I know to trust you guys implicitly. God, oh, God. Your oracle is very wise. Seems mm, yeah. to know quite a lot. We pay them very well. They still want to raise, though. I, I mean, you can never pay in a, the gift of prophecy is sometimes invaluable. I'd say. Never yeah, experienced but like, it myself. But. They're so underqualified for the job. There are so many other people we could have picked for it. It's a very, very common job. I don't know what to say to that, sir. <laughs> Why don't you fire them and get a better oracle then? Because uh, sometimes it's adequacy is enough question. for not having to go through the whole hiring process. I don't want to have to read a dozen, like, certificates and resumes. It's a whole... You know, we don't have to get into this right now. My name I'd is Skewtum. Your name is what? Skewtum. All right, hello, Skewtum. My name is Rin, uh, Nissa of Timbers. Uh, my name is Andy. It's a pleasure to meet you. And you? I'm Hart. Hello. I must say, I like the sound of Timbers, but I don't like the look of your robot arm. Well, I didn't control getting this robot arm, so I appreciate you mind your business on it. I know that living in a world of wood, it can be a bit uh, distracting and disorienting, but... Uh, Promise you it's completely under control. You wouldn't That's happen to be That's kind of racist there. thing to say, Skewton. It's a... It's something of a precaution here. You wouldn't happen to be like a robot wearing a skin suit far from the south here to overthrow me, right? Because that wasn't in the prophecy. I can gladly prove it to you if you have a knife of some sort that I am 90% flesh. What the fuck? <laughs> He, uh, you he... stab yourself just in this guy's kitchen? <laughs> it's not like I'm he has away. another room to stab yourself in. 
That's not the point. <laughs> Here's the point, he says, somehow hearing the thing you said out of character, and tosses uh, tosses you a small wooden knife. The handle is wooden? It's wooden! No, the whole thing is wooden. <laughs> I'm going to look at this man, forward. and look at the knife, and look at this man, and sigh, and try... <laughs> And scrape a splinter off of it, because this is not going to work out. You know I have a real knife, right? No, actually I didn't. <laughs> Unless you just had a gun. Now I've got two tiny daggers and two guns. It's my favorite I'm Elton well John prepared. song. See, this didn't happen uh, in canon, but imagine that... <laughs> You start to say, you don't have a knife, right? And Rin already has your knife in hand without asking, just trying to get a splinter, and you just look at her. You're whittling. <laughs> I'm whittling. So valid, though. But no, in character, I'll look at you and go, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Skewered, I'm just going to take my friend's here knife. Uh, you can check it if you need to inspect it. It is, in fact, a real knife. But this, this wooden knife, though lovely and intricately made, is not going to pierce the skin of me. You'd be surprised, but I'll go ahead and allow it. I promised you I, w I would. I would. <laughs> so uh, Ren is going to go just, oh, fuck. I don't know. She's going to stand up and uh, fucking where? Where? Uh, above her left hip. She's just going to draw a little line. Okay. Make sure it's deep enough to bleed, but not enough to like fucking slice an artery. He looks, but he doesn't touch, and he puts his hand on his uh, large, masculine chin, and he nods, and he says, I see, yes. Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've had a, we've had a few problems with, uh, you know, it's a whole Terminator scenario. It's the robot overlords deep in the south. I have not heard of this Terminator, but I am familiar with robot overlords, so I relate. Yeah. Good place to go next in case you wanted to, like, s scam some shit for your metal arm. That'd be pretty cool. But anyway. I do not participate in the scamming, but I appreciate your uh, advice. We may I heat do. it in the... <laughs> we may heat it in the not-so-far future. Well, also, if you like, we could, like... I mean, I mean, you could, like, just beat them like a pinata to get the technological goodness inside. I appreciate your advice, and I will make sure Blesser notes that. Uh, no, I'll make sure Heart notes that. But, uh... I like pinatas. Good for you, good for you dear. We should, we should tell us these termites, yeah? These termites, and we right, can talk about yes. the cross. Help you Probably. with the termites, a favor for a favor, especially since I've bled for this cause. Yes. So, Skewdom goes to uh, a very large uh, board. And pulls a uh, pulls a thick sheet of paper down over it. First, it's a, a map of the world, the one that we've already seen because I only drew the one. And then he pulls down another one that has a diagram of uh, what appears to be a giant termite. All right. This is a uh, termite. They're uh, they're all over the goddamn here. Um, live in the earth, eat the wood. You know their deal. They're very mm -hmm. similar to termites of other ones, but uh, they're just very they're just big. All right. I was going to suggest vinegar, but uh, seeing how large that thing looks, uh, I'm going to say that's not going to work. Our plan is to go through the tunnels and then uh, kill the queen so I can eat its sap. Um, termites produce honey, which is another reason that they're very worthwhile for farming. In addition to their prodigious strength and ability to build, uh, they're also very, very strong and powerful. But yeah, the honey. Uh, however, the royal jelly allows one to control other termite colonies. Uh, normally, there's only supposed to be one queen. However, uh, somehow, the queen that we have on staff, and he kind of gestures outside the window to uh, a hill a little to the side of the village, somehow had a child without us knowing, and had managed to eat royal jelly, and uh, we've got a whole we've got a whole civil war with the termites going on now. It's It's a big problem. I didn't realize that we would be playing diplomats. That is, I was, I'll put my club away. Oh, I was thinking we could all go and murder the queen so I could just, you know, it, it's the whole Piana thing, you know, just going to beat it open and then lick out the chocolatey goodness inside. 
I am speechless at that. See, if I eat the royal jelly, I'll be the queen, and I can command termites directly. We didn't do this normally because the way didn't want to have, you know, just one guy in charge of it, just in case. Uh, but I'm willing to test this theory on myself. I think you would make a lovely queen. Damn straight. <laughs> Let's take a break because we've been recording. <clears throat> Let's take a break so we've been recording for an hour and come back. Because, uh, oh man, Scutum's voice is not easy on me. You're doing great, DM. Thank you. Can you I mean, hear my cat right now? Sound like it's easy on you. You are <laughs> doing real well. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> 